Hello, Chemistry 11. Uh, this is Mr. Chan. And before I start today's lesson, what I wanted to do was turn your attention to page 108 in your Heath Chemistry textbook. And in your Heath Chemistry textbook, what you will see is this particular diagram where you have uh, this moles is the heart of chemistry. So depending on where you start, let's say you start from a mass of an atom, what it does is that it gives you basically the instructions on how to get to moles. So if you start here, mass of an element, and let's say you want atoms of an element, what happens is that it gives you the direction in terms of you first divide by molar mass to get the number of moles, and then you multiply by 6.02, to get the number of atoms and so on. All right, now, if you are struggling with the conversion, like the way that I've been showing you in the mole calculations, let's say here, let's see, if you're struggling with the crisscross method or this cross multiplication, then what you can do is um, you can try going to this page to try to help you walk through how to get to moles. All right, so that is something for you to be aware of. And you can take a look at the different pages in your textbook, um, page 107, page 106. And those, what they do is they give you different examples and they walk you through different ways to answer the question. Okay, so if you're not comfortable with the method that I use, definitely take a look in your textbook you know, page 104, 105, 106, 107. And what they do is they give you examples for you to walk through, all right? Now, one of the practical uses of the mole unit is something called molarity. So now molarity, some of you have probably been exposed to back in grade 10, when you do a lab or something like that, you might see a bottle that looks, let's say we have hydrochloric acid and you have like 0 0.1 molarity, this one M versus let's say another bottle of HCl is 3.0 M. <coughs> so the question is, what does the M mean and what is the difference between 0.1 and 3.0? Now, some of you might know that one is more dilute and the other is just more concentrated, but how do they get those numbers? Now, back in grade nine, you recall that density was mass divided by volume. So to measure the density of something, we took the mass of the object. In this case, we took the mass of the object in grams, and we divided it by a specific volume. Now, this unit of molarity is very similar to density, but instead of using mass or grams, what we use is we use the mole. So you take a look at that and you notice molarity is moles on the top of the triangle over liters. So the term molarity or concentration describes the number of moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution. So it is like measuring the density, but in density is mass or grams per liter. Molarity is moles per liter. Now, going back to last day's lesson and the day before, recall from moles we can have grams, okay, or, and vice versa, okay? If we know the moles, we can flip to grams. If we know the grams, we can flip to moles. All right, now let me give you a couple of examples uh, just to show you the practical application of this uh, molarity triangle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus on two questions. The First question I'm going to work on is question number 2B. And the other one I want to work on is question number 4B. Okay. 
Now, so let's take a look at question number 2B. So if I do my example here, my worksheet 2B, it says how many moles of each salt are present in 2.5 times 10 to the 2 milliliters of 10 molarity KNO3. So what I wanna do is I wanna calculate the number of moles. So if we look at the triangle up here, we know that moles is equal to molarity times volume, okay? Now, so I'm just gonna move it over here. Molarity is given to you as 10.0 m so m is the units of molarity and we multiply it by the volume which is 0 0.250 liters now notice here i changed the units of milliliters to liters here okay so please be aware of that and then when i multiply it together what do I get as an answer? I get an answer. If you take a look at question number 2B, the answer is 2.50 moles. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now, the second example is question number four. It says, calculate the weight, okay, of NaOH present in one liter of a 1.5 molarity solution. Now, in this particular case, we have to break this down into two steps. So if I did worksheet B here, worksheet 4B, the first step is you want to find the moles. Okay. Recall when I first started this video lesson, I talked about moles being the heart of chemistry. So that also applies to this topic of molarity. Okay. So in this case, you want to find moles. So you go moles is equal to molarity times liters. You know the molarity, which is 1.50 molarity times 1.0 liters, and that gives you 1.50 moles. Now, the second part, it says calculate the weight. So if we take a look at the question, it says calculate the weight. Oops. Okay, so calculate the weight here. So how do we do that? So step two, we calculate the weight Okay, so what we do now is we take the 1.50 moles of sodium hydroxide and then we multiply it by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide which is 40 point, oopsie, zero grams all over one mole. And that's how I get the answer of 6.0 times 10 to the one grams, okay? So you might say, well, Mr. Chan, how did you figure this out? Recall back, it goes back to our mole calculations, okay? So just something for you to be aware of, all right? So hopefully that's pretty clear. Now, there is a little note about how we can make uh, a concentration of solution. There are two different methods, is dissolve a known amount of solute and add enough water for the desired concentration. That's what we've done with the calculations up here. And the other one is take a high concentration solution and add enough water to reach the desired concentration. Now that one, those types of calculations we will do a little bit later on.
All right, folks. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.